they are more motile in vagina okay anyone else this uh, according to her uh, sperms are more motile in vagina anyone has a different idea or everyone agrees with her they get, like, don't give me reason because you're wrong, <laughs> I'm wrong. yeah so I uh, look that. vagina is an acidic environment and in acidic environment usually female uh, sperm should be deposited into adult female is that right and adult female vagina is acidic you know it acidic environment lactobacillus are there and in the acidic environment right sperm slow down actually they become really super active as soon as they go into warm uterus because uterus has alkaline environment less hostile environment why vagina is acidic because acidic environment help the vagina to protect itself from many many microbes but a little cost of that is it slows down the sperms a little bit but sperms are very clever they rapidly jump from vagina they move into cervix is that right but once they are in the uterine cavity sperms become more fast because uh, environment in the uterine cavity is alkaline is that right another good news is that especially around the time of ovulation when ovum is about to be here the glands present in cervix you know cervix has glands which produces mucoid material there's a mucus in the cervix here this mucus especially become thin stringy less viscid and more abundant around the time of ovulation it become thin not thick it becomes stringy it changes its characteristic you may be thinking why Dr. Najib is so fussy about the small point that around the time of ovulation uh, this becomes thin, stringy and uh, it favors the sperm movement, uh, travel. Why I'm fussy about that? Because when you will go into high classes, you will study gyneob. One way to know that female has ovulated or not is check the cervix here. Doctors take a little bit mucus from the cervix, put it on the slide. If it is thin, stringy and making a furring pattern, they say she, she has ovulated. Is that right? Anyway, we will not go into detail. Uh, but this is good for the sperm. That mucus plug, which is present in the cervix uh, canal, that becomes thin and less viscid and more copious, abundant, stringy and all these things favor the movement of the sperm. So movement pass through, the, uh, sorry, sperms pass through the cervical canal what propels the sperm through this? Yeah, the tail of the, you know, sperm. Tail of the sperm moves and these are the propulsion by the tail of the sperm which uh, help the sperm to travel from the uh, vagina and through the cervical canal into, what is this? Uterine cavity. Is that right? Another thing. Uh, okay, tell me. To move the, you know, to produce such a movement, they have to move their tail and then they have to, uh, uh, have to go a long way. They need a lot of energy. From where the energy comes? No, but look, answer is right. One person says mitochondria, he's right. One person says ATP, of course he's right because mitochondria will make ATP. But I'm saying what material they will take into mitochondria and make eventually ATP? No, glucose. it is not glucose, it is not sucrose, it is fructose. <laughs> it is fructose, yes. Semen is very fruity. It has fructose. <laughs> Good news not for you, it is for sperms. They take up the fructose and then from there they produce energy. With that way, fruity thing they move on the way, right? Now, hard workers, you know, really. You know, even molecular levels. Females behave differently than males, isn't it? And I'm so happy that males don't need to behave like females. I don't like to be pregnant. Now, so sperms, they will t uh, from where the fructose will come? From where the fructose will come? Semen will bring its fructose with itself. Right? Uh, semen is rich in fructose. Is that right? So sperm will take energy from the fructose and someone was talking about the mitochondria. Where are the mitochondria in the sperm? In the head. In the head. 
you mean it that sperm has let's suppose your theory is this is the happy sperm and here are the mitochondria and mitochondria act as a bumper and it will hit the ovum oh my god this is not a news yeah where are the mitochondria good good medic in the tail I don't know you are wrong you say head you are wrong you say tail in the wrong it means there is something else middle piece there is something called middle piece here you know do you know all the mitochondria of the supermatozoa come together and fuse and make middle piece? So actually what is middle piece? If you look in the head, there is no mitochondria there. Where the mitochondria have gone? All the mitochondria during the process of formation of the sperm, they fuse together and make the middle piece and this is generating continuously energy for the movement of the sperm. Is that right? Am I really clear? Okay, so sperm is moving through that. Uh, while sperm is moving through this area, I must have, uh, mention one thing. There are some mucosal folds in this cervical region, cervix. And in those mucal, mucosal fold, uh, fold, some of the sperms hide and keep sitting there and then keep on coming into action later on. That is why sometimes sperms, after many days, they are still moving around. That some of the sperm, they stick or they are held into mucosal fold of the cervical canal, right? And from there they may be gradually released. So it's wonderful. Some of them go straight away and some of them are sitting there and then gradually as they feel better they come out into action. Is that right? Right. One question I want to ask. Uh, first sperm will take how much time to reach from here up to here? What is the shortest time possible? Don't tell me before ejaculation. Six hours. Six hours. You are underestimating them. They are too fast. Four hours? They are still fast. That's not enough? Five minutes. Wow. Yeah. You should learn to appreciate the sperm. It's like a mile. It takes it so fast. I am talking about the fastest. And they keep on reaching, you know, the first one sometimes takes as early as five minutes after ejaculation, they have recovered some, I think, very naughty sperms present over here. <laughs> so fast. But some of them may take up to 45 minutes. Right? So, but of course, within 45 minutes, all of them do not reach there. Right? Some of them are wandering around. Some of them, rather, most of them never reach there. Out of 100, what do you think? Out of 100, uh, 500 millions, how many reach here? Okay. Out of 500 million sperms deposited here, how much truly reach, reach at the site of fertilization? Of course, for fertilization, you need only one. But you know, they are coming like troops. Right? So how many troops reach here? Out of 500 millions, about 500, 200 to 500 only. It means, any sperm which is reaching here is one in a million. You have heard the uh, song, one in a million, you are one in a million. That could be said about the sperm also. That any sperm which reaches here, we can sing, you are one in a million. Isn't it? Is that right? So that you have to remember, out of 500 millions or 200 million sperms deposited here, maybe just 200 reach here. Where the others have gone? Don't tell me that they have gone through other fallopian tube to somewhere else. Where they have gone? Yeah? Yeah, they disintegrate on the way, you know, casualties on the way. Many of